A contrail, short for condensation trail, is formed when the cold air in the atmosphere mixes with the heat created from the exhaust of most aircraft. The cold air is rapidly heated, then cooled when pushed through the turbines. The air is then condensed into water vapor mixed with sulfur particles from the engine exhaust, then immediately frozen once the exhaust temperature drops below dew point. This then allows for a condensation trail to be formed momentarily when different types of aircraft pass through. Contrails generally last between one minute to one hour. However, a new phenomenon has been occurring that has made many people concerned, including myself. I learned to identify contrails while flying single-engine planes, Cessnas, in the Civil Air Patrol on McCord Air Force Base located in Washington State. I was fortunate enough to learn to fly planes at the age of 14 in a rigorous cadet program designed to advance pilots to the U.S. Air Force. I took my oath, I learned the ins and outs of the air, and I learned to operate all sorts of aircraft. During this time, however, not once were chemtrails ever mentioned. Chemtrails are said to be witnessed as early as the Second World War in an attempt to use the weather against enemy forces. However, it wasn't until the Vietnam War that such efforts were officially declassified under Operation Popeye. Operation Popeye took place between 1967 and 1972 as an attempt to use the weather against the Viet Cong. The operation commanded roughly 3,000 aircraft to fly over the Ho Chi Minh Trail, dropping silver iodide particles in order to seed clouds resulting in an extended monsoon season. The operation was concluded a success, unlike the war, when rainfall was estimated to have increased at least 30% over an additional month. This was the first time that the United States had successfully manipulated and weaponized the weather. In fact, in 1977, the Environmental Modification Treaty outlawed weather warfare with growing concern of what weapons of the future may entail. Since the 1960s and 70s, weather modification and research has increased tenfold. With issues such as climate change, entire governments have taken it upon themselves to play God in an attempt to control the weather. For example, in 2009, China, in an attempt to quell a drought, seeded clouds in order to increase precipitation. This, however, resulted in a freak snowstorm, which in turn killed many innocent civilians. So it's pretty clear that it's technically possible to substantially reduce climate risk in most places in the world for many climate variables, not just temperature, but also precipitation or soil moisture, and to do that, say, for the next 50 years by putting reflective particles, basically putting an ugly pollutants like sulfuric acid in the stratosphere. And the core technical knowledge about this is actually broadly agreed by a significant number of people in the kind of climate geoscience world, but politically it could hardly be more controversial. Al Gore, for example, has said that it's delusion for scientists to even consider this stuff. With Operation Popeye and China's attempt as two great examples, it can be said that weather modification is a real and terrible threat. Under the guise of global warming and climate change, we are led to believe that weather modification, geoengineering, and spraying aerosols into the atmosphere is a good thing. But in reality, it is a research race to see which global power can weaponize the weather efficiently enough to be used against their enemies. With enough research, it is obvious that geoengineering exists, regardless of government transparency, and costs taxpayers $5 billion annually. At the very least, this information and the sources below can be shared in order to help raise awareness of the issue at hand, the damaging effects, and the real reason behind a centralized control over weather. He said something that really hit home about um, this phenomena of chemtrails. And, you know, when I was a kid, I used to see these trails in the sky all the time and so oh, that's cool a jet just went over and then you started to see a whole bunch of them and the next thing you know everybody in your neighborhood was fighting and arguing and you didn't know why okay and and you really didn't know why i mean everybody was fighting